What's up guys, it's Even10 here. And I'll be honest, I would definitely say the last couple weeks to a month, I've been really struggling with video ideas. I think I've been trying to keep up with the uh, the appearance or the perception of Even10 is the uh, tutorial and guide guy that always brings like new and interesting information that a lot of people didn't know before. And I've been kind of just doing undue pressure on myself. And honestly, I've been kind of getting bored or really stressed out about making these guides because some of these guides do literally take either all day or multiple days to pull off. And I want to be able to give you guys some more consistent content, uh, maybe some more gameplay style related stuff. So I think for right now, I'm just going to be putting like the guides and tutorials in general kind of on the back burner. Like I'm, you guys are still going to learn stuff, but I would say the whole video is going to be revolved around learning like one or two different mechanics that is uh, completely new and different. But this week I will be changing up my gameplay style pretty significantly. It's not gonna affect how much I play or anything like that. Like in EVE Online, I'm still gonna be uh, releasing videos, but it's hopefully this change will give me more than enough content for you guys to, to look out for in kind of a different perspective for some of you guys that wanna try out a similar gameplay style. But I'm not ready to announce it yet because it's not 100% formalized, but once it is, I'll be more than happy to make that announcement, so. Like I said earlier, whenever I'm struggling to make a video, I typically just try to make a long discussion or like a rant video, or in this case, just make an Orca video because those can uh, never go wrong and I really do like the Orca. And this one is all about just the cloak trick Orca. Uh, my previous Orca fits, whether you're doing like a solo mining Orca, whatever it may be, they've always had the capability of doing a cloak trick, but I've always wanted to make it a bit better. And there's a couple things by what I mean by that. But before I jump into that, I actually want to take like a two minute thing just to kind of give you guys a refresher, at least in my personal opinion, the two techniques you use to actually be able to pull off a cloak trick. All right, so we're actually going to be covering uh, how to do the micro warp drive very briefly. I have two videos on how to do it, and there's about 45 other videos on YouTube on how to do it as well. So I'm not going to go too in depth. I'm mainly just going to cover the two different techniques on how to do it. And this first technique is really simple. It's honestly could not be any easier, but the thing is it's only available to certain ship types. So right now I'm flying the Sigil, which is a T1 industrial hauler for the MR. And these ships can actually pull it off because they're actually able to equip, I would say a quote unquote oversized micro warp drive. Um, so the Sigil, the Neris, the Badger and the Wreath, those are kind of all the respective empire um, industrial haulers that can actually do this. The other ones actually aren't able to because the micro warp drive just simply isn't big enough to get them enough speed to do it. So we'll go ahead and align, cloak, turn on our micro warp drive. And the thing is typically you actually have to time your micro warp drive. Like sometimes you have to actually end it early and then decloak and then be able to have enough speed to do it. But in this case, we don't have to do that. So we'll go ahead and click align, cloak, turn on the micro warp drive. We'll go ahead and tap it again just so it shuts off. And while we're doing that here, we've actually built up so much speed that we can actually let the micro warp drive finish and hit enter warp. And we actually are almost like decloaking um, as we are entering warp. So there's pretty much, that's less than a second. Like once you click uh, uncloak and then you're spam clicking that dock button, um, there, there's really should be no way to catch you in that instance. All right, and now we're gonna try this same technique on the bestower and it's not gonna, you know, spoilers, it's just not gonna work. So the ships and how you can actually tell, one of the ships always has a, an inertial modifier bonus, while the other one has a max velocity bonus. So these ones usually have a bigger cargo capacity, and this is the same across the board with all the empires. There's always one that gives a, a inertial modifier bonus, and the other one that gives a cargo capacity, not a cargo capacity, but a max velocity one. So one is built for basically speed tank and having like a large micro warp drive while the other one is just strictly built for cargo size. And so the bestower here is built for cargo size. And so the main reason why it's going to fail right here is because it doesn't have a 50 MN micro warp drive. It's just not going to get enough oomph from the micro warp drive in order for it to enter warp. So as you'll see here, we'll go ahead and try that exact same technique we did on the other one. We'll do cloak, turn on our micro warp drive, we'll double tap it. We'll go ahead and let this finish. So we'll decloak and start hitting dock. And we're, we're nowhere near the amount of speed that we need to do this. So I, if you're seeing this bar right here, I would say for longer than a second or two, you're pretty much vulnerable to ganks. And this technique is typically used if you're going through dangerous high sec systems, low sec, or even null, assuming there's, there's no bubble. But 
that's pretty much the whole thing. And as you can see here, it just simply does not work uh, with these type of ships. All right, and right here, we're actually gonna go over the second technique just cause I already have the bestower undocked. Again, spoilers, this technique is not gonna work either. If you are flying the bestower, the Terra, the Iteron Mark V or like the Mammoth, these, these type of industrial haulers are like big semi trucks. Uh, there's really no way to defend them. They're not like the armored vehicles like they're uh, like the other ship counterparts, like I mentioned before, that are more nimble. They're pretty tanky. These ones are, they can't really do much to, to defend themselves. So your best bet is to either uh, tank them very heavily or just not carry enough cargo to make yourself a target for a gank. So we're going to try a similar technique, except what we're going to do is actually end the uh, cloak early of the micro warp drives because when we actually turn off our cloak our speed goes up because as we're cloaked our speed is reduced so i'll show you what i mean we'll go ahead and click a line turn on our cloak our micro warp drive go ahead and click that again and then once that gets down to like i would say like the last like 85 percent or so um it's just not enough so you can actually see that bar go up pretty quickly that's because that last little like 10 percent gave us a boost of speed to potentially enter warp um, again, that is still just way too long and we will get targeted. So in this case, we're actually going to try the Impel, which is the T2, I guess the big brother of the Bestower, which can actually use a better um, micro warp drive. All right, we're going to try that second technique again, except with the Impel, which is a T2 industrial hauler for the MR. It's the Impel, and I would say it's the big brother of the Bestower and probably the, the Pro Raider is probably the big brother of the Sigil, just because they're just statistics and stuff aligned. So the nice thing about the deep space transport is that uh, all of its cargo capacity is in its fleet hangar. So you don't have to waste a bunch of low slots trying to increase your cargo capacity or trying to balance that with your tank and stuff. Um, you can pretty much just tank it com out completely and still be fine. So here we are, and I forgot to mention this earlier, on all of these fits, I've been using an improved cloaking device as well as a compact micro warp drive. So I'm not using T2, I'm not using dead space module micro warp drives. You don't really need those. Um, on the like T1 and T2 industrial hauler. So we're gonna try and do the timing technique again and hopefully we can have that bar show up for less than a second, which would be uh, ideal. So we're gonna click align, cloak, turn on the micro warp drive. And by the way, you don't have to click both of these at the same time. You actually have up to five seconds to turn on your micro warp drive before, um, so there it is. I would say that's relatively safe. There is a way to make that a bit quicker, I would say, but I would say that's exactly two seconds. So if someone is not ready for you, it could uh, be able to give away, but we'll go ahead and try it one more time. All right, and this time we're gonna try and cut this a little bit closer if we can. Um, last time we did it, it was probably a right around this part or like 80% or so. We're gonna try and cut it a bit closer uh, this time. I'm also gonna wait a, a few seconds after I turn on the cloak, just to show you guys you don't, I've seen some guides say, I have to press both of these buttons or like the cloak and the micro warp drive at the same time. Um, you don't have to do that. So we're going to go ahead and click line cloak. That's fine. If you get the air, just tap it again. You don't need to panic. And that was like a full three, four seconds when we turn on our uh, micro warp drive. So we're going to try and cut this a little bit closer this time. And that is kind of the issue with the um, there we go. That was actually a really good one. So with the timing technique there is some variables there's server ticks sometimes you might be a little bit late you might click it and it might not register turning off the cloak till like a full second later um but there, there are ways you can mess up so it is a risky technique but i will show you guys a way you can actually cheat it out and be very consistent every single time all right so we've determined that doing the second technique of timing the micro warp drive it's it's legitimate but i will say it does require a little bit of luck uh, a lot of skill and sometimes just some luck when it comes to the server ticks and things like that but there is a chance you could mess up um, that's just how it goes sometimes so what if we could do the first technique where we don't have to time our worker warp drive we can actually just let it run out and then we can actually hit cloak and dock pretty much at the same time so the way we're going to be able to do that is by actually overheating our micro warp drive and the way i do it is you um hold shift and you can actually overheat your module. You can't do it while you're actually holding gate cloak. So this will take a little bit of uh, finger dexterity and a little bit of patience. But like I said before, you have up to five seconds to turn on this module. So there's no need to panic. So we're gonna go ahead and do align, cloak, shift, click. 
And so now our micro warp drive is overheated and we even took like an extra second there to, to be able to do it. So this time we're actually gonna let our micro warp drive finish and then turn off our cloak. So it's done. Go ahead and enter warp. So now we there's not even a bar there. <laughs> we just immediately entered warp. And this is by far the safest technique. This is not something Obviously you want to do every single jump. You know, if you're going 12, 15 jumps through high sec, you will burn out your module or something will happen. But this is mostly for those very dangerous systems through high sec or even low sec as well. So if you're going through Udama or Savala or some of those systems that you know a lot of ganks happen, uh, just doing this for one or two jumps uh, should be fine. All right, now we're flying the beautiful Orca. And the fit that I have going on is pretty much just the shell of my solo mining Orca fit which is just the micro warp drive, the improved cloaking device. Um, all the other slots don't really affect align time, so I didn't bother filling those in, but the reinforced bulkhead does. It does affect our align time uh, by about two to three seconds or so. And with the Orca, we will not, we have to do the overloaded micro warp drive thing. If we don't, like we would have to end it super early, like halfway through or something like that. So doing this with the Orca, we have to use the overheated micro warp drive uh, trick. And that is a 500 MN. Uh, compact version by the way so we're going to try the timing technique and the goal of this is to eventually get to the point where we can actually just let that micro warp drive cycle all the way through but just to kind of show you this um, as an example so we're going to go ahead and click align cloak shift click and double click that end it right now i think it's pretty good timing and yeah, that's just not uh, going to cut it. I thought that was pretty decent timing um, on our part, but we might have to just end it a bit sooner. All right, take number two. We're going to do the overheat again. We're just going to end it a tiny bit sooner um, and see how that works. So align, cloak, that's fine. And I forgot to overheat. <laughs> All right, take number three. We're going to actually try to remember to overheat our module this time around. And by the way, we're not running any like inertia modifier implants or anything like that. We're not running anything else uh, as well. Just the ship and a naked clone, as you can see here. So we are going to align, turn on our cloak, not that big of a deal, overheat that. And we're gonna end this a little bit sooner than we did last time. Let's see if that works. And so that does work, I would say good enough. If it is a prepared, um like ganking party i mean we were probably exposed there for probably three seconds which is technically long enough to get locked and killed but it would have to be pretty quick so is there a way we can do that first technique where we could just let that micro warp drive finish and we're instantly into warp and i think we're able to pull that off all right and eventually i did settle on a fit that i actually did months ago i actually just remembered it right now when i was kind of digging through some of my uh ship fittings and doing an instant cloak trick with the Orca is impossible while you have the... Without spending an absurd amount on a micro warp drive as well as a, a faction or like an officer... Uh, what's it called? Like a cloaking device. This is probably the cheapest way to be able to pull it off. And I'll pull up the fit here really quick. So with the improved cloaking device, we still have a compact micro warp drive. But we're running two inertial stabilizers as well as a large polycarbon engine housing. The reason why I have that instead of a, an inertial stabilizer is that it just wasn't it wasn't increasing our align time that higher that much higher. So uh, with this on, our align time is 31 seconds, but with it off, and I actually found after doing hours and hours of testing, it seems like the sweet spot is around having your align time at exactly 23 seconds, or you know it rounds up to 23 seconds. At that point, you're actually able to let your micro warp drive finish, and you're actually able to enter cloak immediately. So if we go ahead and click align cloak remember to overheat our module this time and do it and again this is a fit i don't always recommend but it's kind of more of a fun thing um, to know that it just exists because you are able to actually instantly um, enter warp in your orc and as you can see here there's no bar we're immediately hitting warp and yeah i'll do it one more time for you guys uh, if you want to see it all right we'll go ahead and try this uh one more time i'm sure there is a way you can do it without overheating or micro warp drive but you would have to spend an absurd amount on the compact or i should say on just the micro warp drive as well as the cloaking device 
and as well as some other things, as well as probably turning these into Shadow Serpentis inertial stabilizers because in case you guys didn't know, your inertia modifier modifier also affects your acceleration. So because we're doing a cloak trick, we really only have about probably exactly 11 seconds of acceleration to, to make the most of. So actually increasing your align time, or I should say your inertia modifier also increases your acceleration as well. So we're gonna go ahead and click align. Go ahead and double click it, that's fine. Do this again, we're not looking at our ship, so it looks uh, a little bit awkward. Just let the marker warp drive finish. Uncloak, keep spamming dock, and then we're immediately into warp. So regardless, if you guys have not gone onto the GTA 4.4 station and the test server, you guys should definitely do it. This honestly all looks amazing. I'm actually gonna close this so you guys have a better view. Um, this is a really cool look. I'm surprised they didn't add this kind of stuff much sooner, but I really hope they add this on the Tranquility server sometime soon, because this looks amazing. I was really taken aback and was kind of surprised. I know this is kind of unrelated, but it's super cool looking. So you guys should definitely jump on the test server and head over to GTA 4.4 in the meantime. But um, regardless, I mean, that's pretty much it, guys. I, I love the Orca, and honestly, I'm kind of running out of video ideas, so I'd love to get some uh, feedback or some more video ideas down in the comments below. But it really depends on my new gameplay style that I've kind of talked about before. So I might be a little, little bit limited in that sense, but I will be adding a lot of different and unique content that I haven't done before in the past, uh, you know, in my future videos coming ahead. So that's it. Hope you guys take care and you fly safe.